In this video, I'm going to teach you how to do the trick Eli hops, which looks like this. I'm also going to teach you the techniques on how Eli hop works so that you can learn how to do it in pretty much any direction that you want. So to begin, all you need to do in order to be able to do Eli hops is know how to throw a trapeze. So if you don't know how to throw a man on the flying trapeze, that uh, will definitely help you out because you need that to start the trick. Um, also, it's going to be a little bit easier to learn the trick if you have a wider yo-yo, and that's just because it's going to be easier to aim with a wider yo-yo and actually make it onto the string. And then finally, if you have an unresponsive yo-yo, a yo-yo that does not come back up when you pull on it, um, that just allows you to be a little bit more sloppy uh, when you're getting started. You can do Eli hops with a responsive yo-yo, but your technique just needs to be really solid. But if that's all you have, you can still learn how to do the trick. So to do Eli hops, uh, the motion for it is actually really, really simple. All you're going to do is just start with a trapeze. And uh, you can see that I'm keeping the yo-yo a little bit closer to my opposite hand. And all I'm going to do is pull my hands apart slightly, and then I'm going to bring them back together almost immediately. And if you do that, then the yo-yo should hop right off the string. And then as the yo-yo starts to come back down, you just pull your hands apart. And what you want to do is you want to try to land the yo-yo very, very closely to your opposite hand, and that just allows you to aim a little bit easier. It gives it less room to miss the string. Now, when you're doing this, one thing that might be obvious, but maybe it won't be to you, you don't want any forward or backward motion on either of your hands, because if you do that, then the yo-yo is no longer going to be aligned with the string. So imagine if I just push my yo-yo hand forward a little bit, it's always going to miss the string. And so if you're missing, that could be something that you're doing wrong, is you're just uh, moving your hands forward and backward a little bit. Now the other thing, if you're missing on your catch, it could be that you're allowing too much slack in the string. And you can imagine if there's a lot of slack in the string, then it's going to be bending and folding, and there might actually just not be a platform for the yo-yo to land on when you are attempting the trick. And so try as best as you can to keep your hands far apart enough so that there's no slack in the string throughout the motion of the trick and you'll have a lot more success. Now it's possible that you are attempting this trick and the yo-yo just isn't going anywhere close to what you want. And so now I'm just going to focus on some of those problems that'll happen, but while I'm doing this I'm actually going to show you kind of the mechanics of how Eli Hops works and that will allow you to do Eli Hops in other directions as well. So as I already mentioned, the first thing that you want to do when you do Eli hops is just pull your hands apart. But I also mentioned that you need to bring your hands back together almost immediately. Uh, but think about this. If you were to just pull your hands apart, watch what happens. The yo-yo just comes right off the string, but it doesn't come off going vertically. It actually orbits around your opposite hand first finger. But the yo-yo actually doesn't want to move in an arc. At any given point, the yo-yo really just wants to move in a straight line. The reason why the yo-yo wants to move in a straight line but can't is because there's no slack in the string. And so instead of continuing to move vertically up, it's going to be attached to the string and so it's going to be forced to kind of bend and curve around your finger. So the thing that you can do to control where the yo-yo goes is you can give the yo-yo some slack. Which is why we tell you that at first you have to pull apart to get the yo-yo moving and then immediately bring your hands back together. And whenever you give the yo-yo some slack, whenever you start to move your hands back together, that's going to allow the yo-yo to continue to move in the direction it was already moving. But how do you know which direction that is? Well, if you think about the yo-yo and its relation to the first finger of your opposite hand, imagine that the yo-yo is right here, and so you could draw a straight line, which would be the string, from this first finger to the yo-yo. So now the string is parallel to the ground. Well, the motion of the yo-yo at that instant is going to be perpendicular to that. It's going to be straight up. And so if you wait until the string is parallel to the ground and then you give the yo-yo string some slack, the yo-yo is going to continue to move the direction it's already moving, which is upward, and that will allow the yo-yo to go straight up. Now if you wait just a little bit longer so that the yo-yo orbits and is above your opposite hand first finger, well now if you were to draw a perpendicular line, that'll be straight across. And so if you want to do a horizontal Eli hop, you can give the yo-yo string some slack at that moment, bring your hands together then, and that'll allow the yo-yo to continue in that direction so you can perform a horizontal hop. So watch this. If you actually bring your hands together very, very quickly, the yo-yo will actually move in this direction because that's the beginning of the arc. So again, if you pull and you bring your hands together very quickly, you see how it started to move that direction? If you wait just a little bit longer, you can allow the yo-yo to go up. And if you wait even longer, 
that's how you get the yo-yo to go in the opposite direction. So there's very, very subtle timing that takes place, um, but it, eventually it kind of becomes mechanical to you and you don't really think about it anymore. Now, if you do want the yo-yo to go straight up, another thing that you can do besides getting the timing right as far as when you bring your hands together is you can actually lift your opposite hand just a little bit, and that kind of gets the yo-yo already going in the right direction so that it, it's a little bit easier to direct it where you want it to go. Same thing if you want it to go to the outside. You'll notice that I'm actually moving my hand that direction at the beginning, and that seems to help as well. Now, of course, when you pull the yo-yo down, you want to consume all the slack that would be happening as the yo-yo is coming down. So as you bring your hands together to let the yo-yo go up, you need to pull your hands apart, of course, to get the yo-yo to come back down. And if you want the yo-yo to go as far up as possible, you need to bring your hands all the way together. And that allows you to get as much distance as you possibly can on your Eli hop. So if you put all of these different things together, you keep your hands all lined up and you bring your hands together at just the right moment to make the yo-yo go up, you pretty much have everything in place that you need in order to do a sideways Eli hop as well. You already know that if the yo-yo is going to arc around your finger, you need to wait till the yo-yo gets over here and then you start bringing your hands together and the yo-yo will continue in that direction. So the one thing that you need to think about with a sideways Eli hop that you don't really need to think about with a vertical one is the way gravity is affecting the yo-yo. Now, obviously, in a vertical Eli hop, gravity is just going to pull it straight down. So if you don't do anything, the yo-yo is going to move exactly where you want it to go. But on a sideways Eli hop, if you don't do anything, it's going to fall down and you're going to totally mess up the rest of the trick. So you need to think about some way to compensate for what gravity is doing as you perform the trick. Now, if I were to show you just a sideways Eli hop, one thing that you might notice is that the yo-yo kind of follows the exact same path coming back to me as it does going out. And so what that means, again, if you're just thinking about how the yo-yo is moving up and down, as I shoot the yo-yo up, I try to stop the yo-yo at the very moment it stops moving upward. And then as I pull it down, the yo-yo is accelerating downward because of gravity, and it just so happens to follow that same pattern. And so the other thing that I do as the yo-yo is coming down is I make sure to bring my hands down so that they'll be lower than the yo-yo so that it still has a way to fall down onto the string. Now, that's the way that I typically do sideways Eli hops. Now, some other guys, and you can do this yourself, they actually do something a little bit different. Instead of shooting the yo-yo up above their hand so that it has some room to fall down, they actually shoot the yo-yo below their hand, and when it reaches the end of the hop, they lift up a little bit. So that kind of looks like this, and you can see like my hands are going way, way up, as the yo-yo gets to the end of the string. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm trying to lift the yo-yo up so that it can kind of go up and then back down onto the string. So either way you do it, you really just need to be thinking about how gravity is affecting the yo-yo and compensating for that. But really, that's all the pieces put together. You just have to think about the timing of when you bring your hands together, make sure you're pulling the yo-yo back soon enough so that it doesn't drop below your hand as it's coming back. Uh, it can also help if you drop your hands a little bit. So anyway, keep practicing those things. What I would recommend is just getting started with a basic Eli hop, and then just try to get it higher and higher until you have control, and then you can start experimenting with the different sideways Eli hops until you find something that's comfortable. But that is Eli hops.